This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and many of you have asked about display calibration, particularly on laptops. This also applies to desktop monitors, and nowadays you can even find software that at least can read some color values and brightness values off of things like uh, iPads, mobile OS tablets, but mostly we're talking about Windows, Mac OS, even Linux. So color calibration properly done uses a device like this. This is the Datacolor Spider 4. Pro. With, with that the spider line, the Pro versus the Elite, all that stuff, it's the same piece of hardware every time, and even if you go to the new Spider 5 model, it depends on the software. You get more features, you test more things as you go up the food tree in terms of software. Now, this is not a product placement for Spider. X-Rite also makes a very excellent color perimeter, and honestly, both of them do the job well, so you pick one, you pick the other. I happen to pick this one, it's done the job for me, so I keep using it, but X-Rite is just as good. So we're going to take a look at how it actually works on laptops. Well, and the same thing will apply again to desktops right now. All right, so this is a little tutorial slash just explanation of what color calibration is about for your Windows or Mac or even Linux desktop OS. These days you can get some pretty nice screens on laptops and the thing is they're often not really calibrated very well from the factory. Sometimes manufacturers tune them are very often these days kind of on the cool side so you get really nice deep blues and greens it's nice for looking at the landscape isn't it and it makes it look brighter but it can wash out warmer tones so humans say in the movie you're watching might look a little paler and ghostly than they should and flowers can look a little washed out so We've calibrated this display, and we're using the Lenovo La Vie Z, in part because it has a matte display, so it's easier for you folks to see. Calibration works fine on glossy or matte displays. So it runs in the system tray once you've calibrated. It has a little icon, and there's a quick you can turn it off feature. So let's look at how that changes when I turn off the calibration. See what I mean? Suddenly the, the flower, yeah, maybe it looks a little brighter, but the flower got very pale. The color saturation just kind of went away. So this is why color calibration is something that you want. And this is what the actual calibration program looks like. Now you can recalibrate at any time that you want. In fact, when you go through the first time calibration, it offers to set a reminder, two weeks, a month, uh, six months. You don't need to do it that often on LCD displays. Back in the days of tube monitors, do you guys remember that? You might not be old enough. Those tend to change over time. In fact, even a couple of weeks. So that's why they have them. You really don't have to redo this, gee, you know. A year is just fine. And it has a couple of reminders here, like you should let your display warm up. Again, that really applies more to tube TVs. Reminds you about lighting conditions. Uh, we are in a well-lit studio, so this is not really the place to do a real accurate color calibration. However, the sensor also does have, on the back side, a light sensor, so it reads ambient light in the room. So it adjusts its readings based on the ambient light in the room. But still, you don't have to be in a closet, but try to be in a dark place, or if you're doing this at home, do it at night with no lamp glaring on the screen. The other side of this sensor is what faces and rests on the screen. It has nice little felty rubbery feet here so it's not going to scratch your screen any. And this is the one that's actually going to do the reading off of your screen. There's a little counterweight over here. This hangs over the back of the laptop and moves. You can slide it back and forth on here to suit your laptop. Again, nice soft material. It's not going to scratch anything at all. So that's what that guy looks like. And of course, different brands and different models will look a little bit different. They all do basically the same thing. Now we're using the Spider 4 Pro and there's a Spider 5. The color renderers have been around for a long time. The big change really from generation to generation at this point really isn't so much accuracy. It's about speeding up calibration times. They get quicker and quicker. So that's not, unless you do a lot of these, the most wildly important thing to worry about. And again, these things cost around $150 for ones that do a pretty full feature job. They can measure your brightness. They can measure grayscale output. They're going to measure the brightness of the screen, the color gamut of it in not just sRGB, but an NTSC and Adobe RGB. And they'll do corrections and apply them to the screen so your flowers can look pretty like our flower does. So this is a USB-based device, this calibrator. So before you go ahead and calibrate, you're going to want to plug it in and obviously install the software on the computer. 
And invariably they come with CDs that become outdated quickly enough so you can just download the latest from the color ribbon or manufacturer or their program will update itself. So once you say I want to do a full calibration it shows you where to put the calibrator. So you just put it right here and don't worry if the picture size doesn't quite match up because this has to work with 13 inch, 15 inch, 24 inch displays. Just get it pretty much centered on there and then you hit next. And it's going to cycle through a variety of colors as it does its readings right here. And this is going to not only give us our final calibration for the display, it's going to tell you what the color gamut that it can represent is, the tone curve, all that sort of stuff. So that's how that works. You go on if you have, refill your cup of coffee, come back. It really doesn't take too, too long. You can see the progress bar down here, how far along it's going. And that'll be done. And then you can run through this second set of tests if you wish and you can measure things like the contrast ratio, the brightness, brightness of different OSD settings output, that sort of thing. And if you go with the highest end software you can measure the brightness at all different points of the display as well instead of just the center. The center tends to be where it's brightest. All right, that's well and good. You've decided already. I, I like to have good colors. I want everything to look nice and saturated and I want to see photos and movies as the creator intended them, but I don't want to spend that much money. Or I, I like the way my display looks, but my reds aren't so great, or rarely speaking, my blues aren't so great. First off, if you have Intel dedicated graphics, right click on the desktop, choose graphic properties, go to display, and you can change your colors right there, and you've got advanced. So you can play with this and just eyeball it and decide when you think you've got things looking the way you like it. So you do have a great deal of control. You've got color saturation, you've got you. A lot of settings you can work with right there. Not bad. And if you have a dedicated graphics card, it has its own color settings too. You can do much the same thing. So there are ways to eyeball it and get your calibration looking pretty decently. And lastly, there's Windows display calibration as well. Choose Calibrate Color from the settings over there. It lets you choose which monitor you want to do. So say you're using an external monitor, you can do that. And by the way, with the external color perimeter, you just run the software on the monitor that you want to calibrate and put the sensor, obviously, on that one. So we hit Next here. And it gives you some information on how to choose your gamma, what the desired value is, if it's too low, if it's too high, as you adjust things to try to match the gamma. So it walks you through this and you move the sliders around. There's a slider right over there. So you can move the slider up and down and you can see the effect that it's going to have. So there are a variety of steps here. If you say, oh, never mind, I think I just messed up, just hit the reset button. So that's Windows calibration. So with any of these methods, you can probably get your display not only looking more like you would like it to, but somewhat more accurate than it comes from the manufacturer. Now some manufacturers and high-end laptops tend to have better calibrated displays. And if they, if they spend a lot of time bragging on that, then it's going to be pretty obvious. Apple's MacBook Pros tend to have real close to spot-on color calibration, for example. Some of MSI's high-end gaming laptops do, too, the ones that claim very high color gamut. The Dell XPS 15 4K comes quite well calibrated. Typically, ones with sharp IGSO panels, like our Lenovo Levizi and Levizi 360, and the Dell XPS 13. Now, IGSO is a really nice technology that's very good at power savings, but it often manufacturers will ship that one way too cool, and those are some that you might want to adjust. So there you have it. That's how to get your colors better with a hardware color perimeter, and now you understand how they work, all that sort of good thing, or just playing with the settings yourself if this isn't the solution for you. Now, for those of you who are graphics professionals, video professionals, artists doing anything for print, you're going to do this as part of your job already. So this is for those of you who aren't doing it as part of your job, but you just want better colors.